Hi friends, I'm a radio amateur for a long time, and during this time I have made many devices for various purposes for myself and for friends. But I will be honest, many devices are created purely for video, and after shooting they end up in a large box or in the attic, where I store everything. So people often ask me, have you had any unsuccessful projects? Today I will show you some of them. These are relatively fresh designs, which in theory should have worked as intended, but in practice something went wrong. I spent about a week creating one video. It all depends on the complexity of the project. It happens that the project is done for months. You watch a 10-minute video. But to create it, we must first come up with a project, draw a circuit, design a board, etch it, solder the components, set up the circuit, check the operation of all nodes, and only after that, write a script, sound the text, and make the video itself. One video consists of more than 100 fragments, 100 separate takes, which then need to be mounted to get the finished video. So it takes about a week to create an average video. Now, imagine that you are doing something for several days and at the end it turns out that the device doesn't work as it should. There are two options. Either abandon it and start another project or thinking hard and try to set up. Sometimes the latter option takes a lot of time and projects are postponed until later. I will add that all the projects from this video partially work, but have problems with the operation of some functions. Therefore, they were rejected and I didn't shoot a video on these topics. Many of these projects can be set up, made to work as they should, but you need to spend time on this. Therefore, if some designs will appear in future videos, it means I overcame laziness and adjusted the circuit. I will not show the circuits of the listed devices, but only tell in general what it is and what functionality it should have, as well as why it doesn't work and how to solve the problem. So let's get started. But before we start, a few words about the sponsor of this video, about the company GLC, which is one of the leaders in the field of production of printed circuit boards. You can order PCB of any complexity at the lowest prices. The price starts from $2 for 10 pieces. All links are in the description. Here is a fairly promising step-up DC-DC converter, which consists of an inverter circuit based on the UC3843 chip and a decoder counter. The most interesting in this converter is that it can theoretically produce up to 10 different output voltages. Moreover, the voltage is switched with only one button. For example, you press the button one time, the output voltage is 6 volts, press again, 10 volts, and so on. In addition, the output voltage is stabilized and you can program the circuit, roughly speaking, to any output voltage within a reasonable range. Such a converter can charge or power a laptop or other consumers, even with a non-standard voltage. It works very simply. When a button is pressed, a logical one is sent to the counter input. So the logical one appears on the first output and goes to the base of a low power transistor. One of the feedback resistors of the converter is connected to the collector circuit, which sets the output voltage. When you press the button again, the logical one switches to the second output of the chip. The second transistor will open, connecting a different value resistor to the feedback circuit and the output voltage will change. The idea is brilliantly simple and should work, but what was the problem? The fact is that a transistor is a semiconductor with certain conductivity and it connected in series with the feedback resistor. It also has a certain voltage drop across the junction, which makes calculation of the output voltage difficult. You have to replace the constant resistors in the feedback circuit with the tuning ones for fine regulation of the output voltage. The second problem is that in the feedback circuit there are two resistors that are responsible for the output voltage. Ideally, the divider must be carefully calculated by changing the resistance of both resistors. But switching allows you to change the resistance of only one. You can solve the problem by replacing transistors with photoresistors, that is, the output of the microcircuit activates the LED and the photoresistor connected in series with the feedback resistor will reduce its resistance, which is added to the resistance of the feedback resistor. Unlike the transistor, the photoresistor hasn't the polarity of the connection. 
It is just a resistor and the feedback working isn't disturbed. Pressing the button again will activate the next LED and connect another photoresistor which is in series with a constant resistor. This all is turned on in parallel with the main feedback resistor and thus the total resistance of the feedback resistor is reduced. The second way to solve the problem is the use of specialized microcircuits of analog switches. Such a chip works in the same way, it switches the outputs when a signal appears at the input. In my opinion, such a converter is quite convenient because of a simple control method and a large number of output voltages. The counter has 10 outputs, so if you want, you get 10 different voltages. In my case, only 4 outputs are involved. The second project is an electronic transformer. It looks like an ordinary classic electronic transformer, but it, unlike conventional circuits, has protection against short circuits and, what is very important, stabilization of the output voltage. Protection is organized simply. A current sensor in the form of a low-resistance resistor is connected to the emitter circuit of one of the power transistors. In the event of a short circuit at the output, a slight voltage drop forms at the sensor. This is enough to open a low-power transistor which will shunt the time-setting capacitor in the circuit of the symmetric dynister. The dynister connects to ground and stops supplying pulses, so the circuit is blocked. Voltage feedback or stabilization is realized by a Zener diode and a low power transistor. An additional winding is inserted on the feedback transformer. If the output voltage is greater than the set voltage, the Zener diode will work and the transistor will open. Through the open transistor, the voltage feedback winding turns to short. Other windings of that transformer are the base windings controlling power transistors. When the additional winding is shorted, the control voltage doesn't appear and the transistors simply don't open. Protection of this board works perfectly, feedback also gives signs of life. But in the circuit there is an effect very similar to overregulation. This phenomenon can be observed in circuits with a PWM controller, but we don't have PWM here. The effect of overregulating is when the feedback reaction to voltage drops is instantaneous and the PWM controller instantly increases the pulse duration, not proportionally, but more than necessary. This leads to an upward increase in the output voltage and the controller instantly reduces the pulse duration, again, more than necessary. Thus, the output voltage is constantly changing up or down, and this is even visible with the eye. It is enough to connect a light bulb to the output of the unit. In our case, approximately the same thing happens, and the problem is that we don't have a PWM controller. Full voltage is applied to the basis of power transistors, and they are completely open, and when the feedback works, they close. That is, adjustment doesn't occur by changing the duty cycle of the pulses, but only by their presence or absence. This method wasn't entirely successful. I will try different adjustment methods in the future, and all because I didn't take into account the above effect when designing. Well, next, all sorts of different things. Ultrasonic dog repeller. The project is probably three years old, fully assembled and working without problems. The disadvantage is that it doesn't scare away all dogs. A synchrono step-down voltage converter with an efficiency of more than 90%. The problem is that it doesn't work. Made for a video in which I was going to explain the principle of operation of the synchronous converter. And this microchip, which controls everything, was taken from the old motherboard. But chip turned out to be inoperated, so I threw the board into the box. Mains charger with stabilization of current and voltage, built just on two transistors. Voltage stabilization works fine, but current stabilization not good enough. The circuit is very promising, because 
is the simplest version of a charger with stabilization of current and voltage without the use of additional stabilizer boards. The Dorof AF amplifier on transistors is completely working, but I decided not to do the video because about the Dorof AF amplifier I already have a video, though that amplifier is built on operational amplifier chip. An attempt to increase the output current of the MT3608 chip to 5 amps, everything works, only the efficiency turned out to be very small, no more than 65%. Broadband Frequency Suppressor Tetrafast The video didn't come out because there are a lot of videos on this topic on the net, and even I released one a long time ago. A Jammer of Cell Communications, a popular circuit on the timer NE555 from the Internet. In practice, the circuit is extremely inefficient, generally works, but the output power is negligible. The circuit consists of an RF generator on a single transistor and a modulator on a NE555 chip. Do you think it's all? No. There are many projects, laboratory power supplies, pulse blocks, converters, stun guns. They haven't problem with operation but I have such videos on my channel and I don't see any reason to repeat many times. This is probably all today. Please write a comment which project of the above you'd like to see on the channel or support the comment of like-minded people. And if it is popular, I will try to find the time, adjust that circuit and release the video. With this video, I wanted to show that, alas, not everything in life goes as smoothly as we want. A lot of time was spent on creating unsuccessful projects, but alas, they were doomed from the beginning, and it was only me who was to blame. Please, don't forget to rate this video, share it with your friends. All the additional information, as always, is in the description. Now, I say goodbye, until we meet again. With you, as always, was Kassian TV.